Hello. Hey. Okay. So I think we've got several folks who have to drop at 25 after. So we may want to start a little earlier than we normally would. Cool. Let's jump straight in then. So um, since we have limited time, uh, one of the questions we should ask is, is there anything that the people who have to drop early would like to get to? Uh, okay, and I think reload my side. Okay, am I heard? Hello? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, on my side, I don't have. I mean, maybe uh, a quick uh, report on the morning meeting that we did. Okay. Yep. I, earlier, I, earlier meeting. <laughs> okay. Yep. There is there is a there is a line item for feedback from the Asia community call. Yeah, let's start there, and then we can and then we can double back. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So we at the beginning it was mostly um, the active committers, so us and Dimware and uh, several people from Zort, uh, and then uh, we had a good discussion on some of the pending PRs, both on the examples. Uh, then we went quickly through the uh, multi-module PR um, and um, this PR specifically maybe maybe it's worth also talking about it um, a little bit here um, it's interesting to see what uh, what other folks think yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah uh, and then uh, we had um, a couple of people from uh, from the Asia time zone uh, jo joining uh, and uh, we had a question uh, from uh, Jay from Huawei uh, about um, the need to use IPs on the on the links both on the endpoint and on the client side uh, and uh, at least to the best of my understanding, and this is what I explained from my experience with you know putting together the VPN example. Then all you know we have extended to it with a couple of pass-through endpoints. Uh, it's essentially that uh, at least to the better to the best of my understanding, we currently more or less mandate uh, or require that there's going to be an IP. Um, I, I don't think so. Actually, I think the IPs are currently optional. And this is kind of intentional because if the thing I'm passing over is just an Ethernet frame, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it's possible that there's a bug in the code that's causing it to look like that, but it, they they should be purely optional. Um, yeah, because they should there, be, yes. There I are use, yeah, if, they're, if they turn out not to be optional, then we probably want to get an issue opened um, to make sure that, that we fix whatever bug is making them mandatory. Now we do tend to use them in our examples because most interesting examples involves something that has a source IP at least. But it, it's certainly not the only kind of examples. Well, at least I'm not aware of like uh, the pass-through um, um, endpoints uh, that, that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, they do this trickery with passing back and forth IPs between the context of the mm -hmm. client. Uh, and the context that that is going to be returned uh, back to uh, as a result of the request to the endpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is how we kind of pass uh, uh, the IP information uh, through the pass through endpoints. Totally. Yeah. No, I mean the, the the thing the trick there though is in that use case you have a situation where <clears throat> the final CNF in the chain is providing mm -hmm. a source IP and you'd like that to yeah. actually be the source IP for the client. And the yeah. intermediate pass-throughs don't have any opinion on this at all. In fact, exactly. they're a good example of not having an IP on the interfaces because they just pass it straight through. Mm -hmm. So, mm, okay. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's definitely an interesting question. And the, the truth is most interesting examples are gonna have them. But I, I can think of some, some of which last I checked still had big footprints um, mm -hmm. where you don't. 
Okay. Yeah, we, we, we might want to figure out a pure, I don't know, layer two example where mm -hmm. client doesn't uh, doesn't need an IP or has the IP pre-assigned. Actually, that, that could be a... I, I think that's actually probably a really good idea because I can absolutely see how somebody looking at what our examples would get the impression that Jason had. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That that makes some sense. Okay. I will I will look at it in the in the examples repo and see if I can I can figure out something that that makes sense. Good. Um, so uh, that was more or less about the call. I think that it's useful. I'm very glad that we keep keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's continue. Uh, let's continue yeah, in, uh, in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's probably a very good idea. Um, and, and these things take a little time to grow. I mean, when we started doing these calls, they weren't instantly gigantic. Mm -hmm. So uh, then um, maybe a quick, uh, a quick glimpse in the multi module repo. Sure. Uh, just uh, yeah, just to, to, to use the the time. Um, so we we went through it today, and my only I mean of course it, the the result of it is going to be a better uh, dependency management for the modules that are going to okay, for the for the projects that are going to depend on the SDK for example so yeah mm -hmm. certainly restrict uh, the the dependencies that you drag in <laughs> uh, with the current. Uh, uh, with the current project that we have. Um, my only concern is how do we maintain this? And also, are there any best practices that we can follow from other projects? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, um, we spoke last time that this is the, the near-term solution for a bigger problem that I think that we have. Uh, and it is that, that we have too many things uh, just happening mm -hmm. in the same in the same tree, uh, yep. which results in a, in in a lot of of course dependencies because everyone drags their dependencies in and then yeah, it's it's where we are of course. Um, so yeah, of course the, the 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 I I can agree that this is a short term solution. Okay, near term solution. I don't know how short it is, but near term. Uh, and uh, my only question is how do we how do we plan to maintain this? For so, for example, if there is a proto booth. Uh, update. Uh, what do I do? I, I go and um, just change this uh, everywhere. You know the you know, I don't know five, ten, whatever number of uh, Go mod uh, files we have, um, and of course best practices. So, mm -hmm. I think we should probably look into both. I think those are sort of astute observations. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I would say is, in addition to being uh, a near-term solution. Um, it also essentially allows us to stage ourselves for breaking the repo up, right? Because the, the work that you have to do to successfully break the repo up is going to intrinsically involve introducing separate Go module dependencies and the interdependencies among them. Okay. And so this lets us actually see the shape of the world if we were to break things into separate repos. And from there, we can sort of make decisions that are more intelligent um, by doing it in a stepwise fashion. Yeah, yeah, of course, that, that, that makes sense. <clears throat> cool. Um, so was there any other uh, discussion that happened from the Asia meeting or stuff that you wanted to, to bring up that came out of that? Because I'm super excited about the multi-module repo and I'm also super excited that we're thinking through like how to properly handle this care and feeding. Uh, Nothing on my side. Uh, 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 Radoslav, are you are you here? I'm sorry, I don't see the list of participants. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Radoslav told me today that he had some troubles when he was rebasing uh, some of his PRs, and I don't know something was not working. So. Uh yeah, I I do have an issue for that. CI stability last week was terrible, um, and so there's been a lot of work going on trying to fix that. Um, um, it yeah. seems mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to mention about the how to say it, uh, to verify to verify the things that work uh, not only on the CI because I'm mainly using the Vagrant setup and most of the how to say the Kate's related targets in the make files 
or either broken or I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Um, so, so that might be something that we can fix. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, do we, I, I believe you, I think I saw an issue open for that. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, and there was another one after mine actually that was related to that same issue. So I think we we also had a transition over to the Helm charts that was going on as well. Mm -hmm. Are the Helm charts not working? Um, no, the Helm charts are working, but um, yeah, it's basically we have some targets that are left behind that are not yet updated. Ah, uh, so. okay. That yeah. actually brings me around to this is something that I, that I thought yeah. we should probably talk about as a community, which is sort of the cleanup of the make files. Yeah. Uh, and this is something Denise had done. Do you want to talk a little bit about it, Denise? Uh, yep, uh, uh, we have uh, we have uh, we had uh, eliminated uh, Canvas MS config to use Helms, uh, but we did not delete a deprecated API and YAML configs. And uh, by this PR, uh, I've deleted this. Uh, mostly, that's it. Yeah, I think you also updated the documentation so that it talks about the the recent YAML stuff as well. Um, so I guess, Radoslav, does, does this look like it's starting to fix the problem you identified? Um, yeah, more or less. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, I did want to, I did want to raise it for discussion here to see what people thought, because it is kind of a big change in the make file machinery. <clears throat> and it struck me as generally good, but the sort of thing that, that would be kind of shocking if you didn't expect it. So I did want to give folks a chance to talk about it a little bit because effectively it is moving everything over to the Helm file stuff. Okay, yeah, uh, and one thing that I wanted to bring up is that sometimes there is a difference between the behavior of the project if tested by the CI and if tested uh, on hand actually with Vagrant or Kind or something else. So yeah, it's, it's worth testing manually as well. <laughs> okay, no, no, absolutely, always, mm -hmm. always. And or, or improving what we were testing in the CI. Yeah, so, yeah. So. Cool. Awesome. So we've been kind of jumping around here. Do you want to take the helm again, Frederick? Sure. Okay. So back to the uh, so back to the start. So we have three recurring. Well, we'll say one recurring meeting at the moment, which is this one. Um, can we remove those two for the moment? Sure. Use case and documents. Yep. <coughs> cool. We also have the telecom user group that we attend on a regular basis. So there's one at 8 a.m. on the first Monday and one at 4 a.m. on the third Monday, all Pacific time. We have the CNCF network working group, which occurs every two weeks on Tuesday. We have ONS coming up next week in Antwerp with four accepted talks and a telecom, telecom user group and CNCF test by tutorial. So which brings up the question, what do we want to do for next week's meeting? Um, so how many folks who are regular attendees are going to be at ONS? I imagine quite a few given the fact that we have so many talks accepted. Might be better asked the other way. Yeah, that, that's actually true. I, I, I mean, I will not be at ONS, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, given the number of people who are missing, it might be better just to cancel next week. Yeah, I'm happy with that. We can cancel next week and then reconvene. Uh, let's see what day would it be. Calendar says the 1st of October. Yeah. Would uh, would that work for, uh, for others? Is I don't think we have anything, any burning issues between that, that's coming up uh, between now and next week. Cool. I, I vote to uh, to cancel it. Uh, ultimately, it's up to you since you're the one here, Ed. No, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, Let me, okay. I'm updating the document so it correctly reflects this. Um, <clears throat> there we go, cool. All right, so we, we correctly captured the next call stuff. 
Great. So back to major events. We have the CNCF webinar coming up on October the 2nd, which should be on the Wednesday. Uh, do you know if that's going to be live streamed or is it just going to be a recording? I think it's live streamed. Yeah, so feel free to join us. Yeah, bring questions. We like questions. We have Open Source Summit in Lyon, France, with a talk accepted. We have KubeCon and CloudNativeCon in North America coming up with NSMCon. Um, we have a significant number of talks submitted now, and so we're pretty pretty happy with that. Uh, so we will we will work to get those uh, talks. Um, worked out and uh, published. We have the Kubernetes Forum, which is coming up in Seoul and Sydney. So the CFP is already closed for, for that. Uh, but if you are near Seoul or Sydney at the time, um, feel free to join <coughs> the CNCF. And I believe Dan Cohn will be there. So. Um, we have the social media community team. So is Lucina on the call? Uh, Lucina did let me know she's not going to be able to be on the call today, but she did go through and update the stats um, leading into the call. Okay, so with that then, um, she posted that we have 426 followers with an additional eight in the last week. Uh, 1,847 following with 29 and 484 tweets and retweets with an additional 28 from last week. Uh, and she's made a variety of interesting posts, um, basically outlining our ONS and NSM uh, in, uh, uh, calls. Uh, and she's also going to post reminders on the ONS EU talks, the CNCF webinar, live tweet, uh, talks from next week and the co-presenting of the CNCF test bit tutorial. Uh, is there anything else we would like to ask her to post that is not on here? No, that sounds about right for now. <coughs> cool. And so, um, okay, let's jump into the main uh, into the main agenda. So, good beginner problems, fuzzing bugs. <laughs> so we have two fuzzing bugs. Um, can we describe what a fuzzing bug is? Yeah, so basically fuzzing involves taking your code and running, uh, essentially trying to walk the tree of possible inputs into it. It's a technique that people use to detect crashes and security issues. <clears throat> and we've recently had some folks show up in the community who have quite kindly volunteered to fuzz our code for us. And they've started the process of, of fuzzing it. Um, this will eventually turn into PRs with fuzzing unit tests. But for the moment, they've been reporting back on problems that they've found through the fuzzing. And these end up being almost ideal starter problems, right? Because essentially, <clears throat> what you get is a panic that tells you exactly where the hell it's upset, right? So it literally says, there is a problem. The problem is here. This is the kind of problem. Um, and that makes them sort of ideal um, places to um, start. And then we've also got comments that point to unit tests for these cases. So you can go and do the reproduction. Uh, Book Moons is the one who's doing the fuzzing. They're, they're awesome. Um, and so if you are part of the Network Service Mesh community and you're looking for a way to get, get started in contributing to Network Service Mesh, these are pretty straightforward problems that probably would take somebody you know, an hour or so to get going and resolve. Um, if you basically got some background in Go, but not necessarily some background in the network service mesh code base. <clears throat> and so I, I've been sort of calling them out and tagging them that way um, because I, 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 it's always useful to have good starter problems for people to work on. Nice. And so how would a person find those fuzzing bugs? Is there a tag on the repo or? Well, there, there's a link here. And then there's also, um, there are tags. I've labeled the bugs with fuzzing and with good first issue. 
So you can find it with either one of these tags as well. Cool. So we have CI, so we already spoke about CI stability. Yep, seems to be settling down again. Um, part of it turns out to be, and this is one of the advantages of running CI as extensive as we have, is that if you run extensive CI and you run it a lot, you shake out all of your highs and bugs. Um, and so as the code evolves and you, a new fix comes in and G it passed CI and it got in, occasionally it had a highs and bug and so it shakes out in, st in CI stability a little bit going forward. But because there's so much CI being run all the time, you do catch them. So overall it makes the code harder. Uh, it, it hardens the code and produces more stability, but occasionally you have a bad week and we had a bad week last week, but it seems to be resolving. Hey, Frederick, I think you're on mute. Oh, sorry about that. Um, cool. So let's jump into, let's see, simplifying the make rules. So I think we talked about simplifying the make rules when Radislav yeah, brought it before. up. Yep. Cool. So I don't think there's anything left to say on that then. So just jump straight into in progress. Sure. So I think the, the, SDK refactor of the BPP agent data plane. That was stuff that you're working on, Denise. You want to say a few words? Uh, nope. Uh, it is uh, completed uh, and uh, I, I wait uh, your review. Cool. Uh, that's it. Yeah, if folks in general can take a look at it. Um, effectively, what's going on here is the, the refactor of the SDK, um, particularly providing things like internal traceability and other things. Um, and provide, you know, it, it, it worked out well. And so we started looking at other components of the system that could be refactored this way. So for example, we do expect people to be building, v just like we have the SDK for network service endpoints because we expect people to be building network service endpoints. Um, we do expect as we evolve towards multi-data plane for people to be building data planes of various sorts, um, particularly in the support of hardware NICs, but that's not the only set of things people might do it for. And so we wanted to make that easier um, as part of the system. So um, SDK style refactor of the network service manager. Andre, do you want to say a few words? Yeah, uh, VPR is mostly in. So the general idea could be look at uh, and review it in it. So we have uh, two separation uh, uh, of uh, uh, establishing a network service uh, in the NS manager uh, to uh, small pieces with chains of uh, smaller network service uh, operations. All of this uh, uh, implement our network service request uh, protocol uh, and we do it for both local to remote and remote to local. So we have two chains of operations. Uh, at the moment, I'm working to simplify the healing stuff we have at the moment to have a third uh, chain. Uh, so all of this reuses small pieces of code. It will be easier to test and easier to maintain. Yeah, and part of the idea here also is that as people, we, we expect people to be writing network service managers for other environments like uh, VM environments and bare metal environments. And so this will hopefully make that process easier. And then um, it also, we expect to start seeing more proxy network service managers, things like we've talked for a while about the create proxy network service manager. And the idea in both cases is just to have reusable SDK components you can chain together for most of what a network service manager does. And then you can just write the one little piece that is different for your particular network service manager. So maybe your network service manager, instead of turning to uh, a network, you know, an NSM date uh, forwarder, which is kind of Kubernetes specific, maybe it turns to some SDN controller and asks it to do something, you know, that kind of thing. Cool. So we've already talked about the multi-module repo stuff. Um, Denise, do you want to say a few words about the Ethernet context stuff? Uh, 
Uh, yes, sure. Uh, PR is provided uh, and uh, ready for review. Uh, but I have uh, one question uh, at uh, I've uh, mm -hmm. provided a question into PR. And uh, mostly this issue uh, about that we have uh, a simple problem that if uh, NCA dies and recovers on NCA site, we have uh, out of date uh, MAC address and uh, this uh, PR should uh, fix this problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, effectively it's, a, it's an ARPENTRY problem. So oh, yes, yes. yeah, any, any kind of healing where a client gets automatically reconnected to a new network service endpoint so that it gets continued service. Um, <clears throat> without ethernet context, there's going to be a different ethernet address um, on the end that it got reconnected to. And therefore your ARP entries will be mismatched. And it's not a fatal error. Uh, you know, ARP is smart enough that it will figure it out, but um, it does result in some lost pings, um, which makes testing annoyingly flaky. Um, and it also is just not as, as robust a situation as we can construct. And so ethernet context allows you to optionally uh, essentially to optionally carry that ethernet context with you so that when you go to do the, the healing and the re-request, you can get the right behavior. So, cool. So I think we've, we've talked before about the security stuff. Um, Ilya, I think you've been mostly blocked behind the CI flakiness on this, is that correct? Yeah, right, and now I just checked. There only one test failed, example, have VPN which I hope will be fixed by our cool. fix mine and entry. So excellent. I think after that fix will be landed, we can merge security. Sounds fantastic. Um, and then Artem, I know that you're waiting on a bug fix from VPP, you think, on the SRV6 support, is that correct? Uh, yes. OK, cool. So we will. Continue to chase that down. Um, so, Radoslav, do you want to say some stuff about what's going on in the kernel forwarding plane currently? Oh, we've lost Radoslav and Ivana and Nikolai. So they were going to talk about these items. So I think that's kind of it for the set of status of the project for this week that I'm aware of. Do other folks have other things they want to raise? Cool. So I think we're sort of at the end of the agenda for this week. Uh, do we want to go ahead and yield back the time, Frederick? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So. Uh, okay. Let's see. So as a reminder, uh, there's no meeting next week. Um, looking forward to seeing uh, several of you uh, next week as well. And uh, we will see you all again in this meeting uh, on October 1st. Uh, same, same time two weeks from now. Thank you all. all right. Thank you.